What's up, everybody? This is the Jedi. I first want to shout out my girl Mika. Mika Bagger. Bagger. And <laughs> and, uh, and I also want to shout out K.R. Watkins. Bagger. Bagger. Um, thank you, ladies. Um for this and making me aware especially on the heels of the R. Kelly piece because it fits a theme um, and I don't think it was lost on these ladies just by the fact that they felt compelled to present this to me to us you know I'm still waiting on footage from Harvey Weinstein and his accusers. I'm waiting on surviving Harvey Weinstein. I'm waiting on surviving insert name of white person. I'm waiting. And I feel like somebody even said that in the comments someplace. I may go through some of you guys' comments while we're on this video, you guys, because I, I need to do that. If for another reason, just to shout people out. But I always tell you about the false equivalent. If they've been doing something for a million years, every day, then when anybody else that's not them does it one time, and it can be an aberration, they will equate that with all the other millions of times they've done it. Or they will invent out of thin air a false equivalent. Just to always make it seem like they're not the only evildoers on the earth. This is a problem. And it's specifically evil when you are talking about this man. I need to also let you know that in sourcing an article to bring you on this, every picture used, every uh, source that I clicked on as a possible article to use, all used the same picture. Hmm? I can show you better than I can tell you. This is the Associated Press. This is the one we're going to start with. All right. This is pulse or somebody same picture this huh? is F S F gate or san francisco gate same picture you see there are millions of pictures that exist of this man but they all chose this picture and i'm sure if i had kept clicking on other potential articles that i wanted to possibly bring they would have been using the same picture. What does that say to us, Jedi? That says that this is immediately out the gate, a concerted effort, a hit piece, a hit piece. You see, it would have been a hit piece no matter what, but it's more telling that all of them are using the exact same picture. Now, I haven't read any of them, and we're going to read all the ones that I've cited already to see if they're saying the same thing. The exact same thing. It's one thing, it's the story. But will it say the exact same thing? Because there's a million ways to tell one story. And a million ways to present it, certainly editorially. You see, they could have had any other pictures of Michael. But this is what they chose chose I always tell you they have a writer an editor and a publisher this does not get here by accident they chose this picture that's what you first got to be aware of to set the right tone in your mind the proper context of understanding I need you to process that for a minute every single one of these publications has an editor a writer and a publisher at the very least, 
and then you can get into graphics and ah, ha, ha, but a, a writer, an editor, and a publisher, they all decided on this picture. If you think that's just happenstance, get off this video now and go to Vegas or go play the scratcher or something because clearly the odds of winning are in the air. I'm over it. But you see, as I mentioned to you many times before, and certainly in the in the R. Kelly video that I did, you know, there's this ongoing assassination of our greats to relegate them to uh um well usually try to destroy them financially before they leave the earth. Relegate them down to something that is meant to be seen as less than their greatness you know and they use not only they white ass but they also use fake ass weak minded ass black Christians who can always be counted on to play a part in any conspiracies against us because your character is inferior to that of the Muslim and the righteous Mike Tyson, I cite for you. Mike Tyson, I was just recently watching something in the last week or so, or a couple weeks, on Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson was the most exciting, explosive, uh, attended, watched, heavyweight champion ever seen by humanity hear the words I use don't hear what I didn't say because then I can hear your bitch ass typing uh uh but you can't you can't say Muhammad Ali we're not, we're not talking about that we're talking about, we're not talking about fighting ability you understand a Mike Tyson fight was going to be watched by all of humanity he was young, he looks the way he does, uh, you know, you just, you don't want to see him. I'm, I'm not even feeling safe when I'm watching it on TV. I'm looking over my shoulder like he could be here. Maybe it, the TV is a recording or something. He, he might be behind me. I don't know. But it's Mike Tyson we're talking about. You know what I'm saying? Mike Tyson. In fact, I remember one year I was at, uh. Uh, some friends were throwing a, a, a fight party. Um, I think that's when he fought. Don't let me start lying. I'm trying to recall who he fought. Anyways, I feel like it was Buster Douglas, but I don't know. Anyways, I'm at a friend's house for the fight party. And, wallahi, I swear by Allah, I got up, like where I was sitting was just the kitchen was just there's a wall and then the kitchen the counter is there for you to get some more you know uh whatever we were eating it took me less time than i just explained it to you and the fight was over i was pissed because i'd driven a, a a little bit of a distance and you know you you going to like a gathering so you're trying to look cute you see what i'm saying and you, you, this is what you've scheduled for your day, and so you've assigned a few, if, you know, a, a certain amount of hours that you think you're probably going to be involved doing this, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And you know, and then it's over. Pissed me off. I feel like Mike still owe me money for that. You know I me? Mean? Just I got to talk to my attorneys. You know what I'm saying they, I need to talk to my attorneys. So I feel like he still owe me some money. I feel like he still owe me some money, maybe like ten dollars at least. For my gas. That's what I'm saying. All right. Don't tell Mike. Alright. We, we don't want him to know anything until he gets the affidavit. Alright. But now. Look where he's at. You know. And they take you through a mind fuck. And what Michael had. That many of them didn't have. Was he had a strong spiritual center. 
the base of his intention was like mine on the earth is to do right and to do good and to tell the truth that's who he was whereas many of them other folks they weren't at that center then you add to that many of the others could be seduced with women and drugs well Michael was not philandering women and he didn't do drugs I still question when they say, well, you know, he he was burned in the in the eighties doing that Pepsi commercial and that's I I I have real issue with that. And I'm gonna tell you why. Because if you watch the video of the Pepsi commercial going wrong, as I have and gone through it forensically for myself, we see the volume of hair that Michael had. And when he, when they put the fire out, the area that was burned looked like a perfect yarmulke. Like when you see these fake Jewish people wearing those those little things on there, that's known as a yarmulke, everybody. Yarmulke. All right. And which is, uh, which is another. Um, it's like God's blessing because even in Islam we say when you sneeze we say yamak Allah um, but if you look at that footage the area that was burned if you didn't know it was a burn you would have thought was Michael wearing a yarmulke there looks like he's wearing a yarmulke I think it's a yarmulke I think it's yarmulke who made it was it Versace was that was that Gautier was that who was it you know, you know it looks like a yarmulke but the rest of his hair was there so when they start with this well Michael was wearing wigs that may have came later as a performer myself I can tell you I saw Michael Jackson with my own eyes three times three times I was blessed to be in front of this man at his concert three times I saw him I saw him with my own eyes and I can tell you that this was not wigs and weaves and whatever happened in the 1980s was already over by the 1990s when I saw him when I beheld him I think that's the proper description because you don't see Michael Jackson you behold Michael Jackson behold because his energy was so forceful on the earth so forceful but he would be putting his hair in a ponytail he would have it in the incidental ponytail you would see him pull the scrunchie out and he and when he does you know uh stuff where he's gonna be just it's a hair song where he's doing a lot of especially like when he does black or white you know and he's doing that head banging thing with the hair i mean why i mention all that is because they claim that that's when he uh became addicted to painkillers I say I call bullshit on that also remember you're listening to someone who impersonated this man professionally for years I studied him I need you to really be clear about that I studied this man you can't even put a silhouette up of, uh, up of him and tell me it's Michael I'll tell you if it's Michael I studied the man I can also tell you just as a little side note some of the uh this is it some of that 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 movie this is it some of that stuff is not Michael Jackson everybody what I also learned in my studies of him is that most of the public <clears throat> you just give them a glitter glove and some trickly hair coming down they go, oh it's Michael very easy to pull off Michael Jackson to a lot of people you see 
until you show up as a as a lookalike, and then they're really scrutinizing you. That's when they scrutinize you. You see, uh, but anyway, uh, I suggest to you that after those first allegations came back early back, like in the 1990s. When the first allegations, the first kid or whatever it was, way back, that they say he ended up paying money for or whatever, what, but whatever, whenever the second one surfaced or something, I, I lose track now. Anyway, some of us remember when Michael Jackson was then, he wouldn't come back to America. And... They wanted him to turn himself in and all this and the third. And then from overseas, Michael released a statement saying that he was addicted to painkillers. Uh, Elizabeth Taylor went to go see him and then she gave a press conference saying she had seen her friend and that he was in terrible need of help. And, da, 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 da. and I suggest to you at that point, it wasn't Michael turning to drugs. My problem with most of our famous people is they have one too many white people around them. That means if you got one white person around you, you got too many. Because historically we've seen, just go back from before any of us even came to earth. It's always an arc. Brilliant talent, brilliant something, brilliant, boom. Makes an arc to stardom, meets white people, go straight down into the fucking grave. Broke and forgotten. They're always inserting themselves in our shit. And we're allowing it. So, I can absolutely imagine that Michael Jackson was under... At your, listen, you can't go anywhere. You can't blend into any society on the earth. You know, even heads of state, of nations can leave their country and go into exile. Nobody knows where they're at. Well, Michael didn't have that option. His name and face was instantly recognizable by all humanity across the earth. He is the most famous human being to ever walk on planet earth. That's not up for debate. There's never been any other human being that has come to earth that has been as famous as Michael Jackson. Period. So, what do you do? Now the world is, they're putting out these outrageous lies about you. The world is turning against you. And because he's an international uh, property who sees it all, he fully can understand the way that you can't. He fully understands the power of the media. And the reaction of the public. He fully understands that. And he knows what they've just unleashed. You can't sit down with every single person on the earth. And say no no I'm Michael Jackson. I'm a good person. I didn't do this. They're lying about me. There's You can't. You wish to God you could. But you can't. So now what? So I can imagine, roll in some white doctor, some white whisperers first. You know, Michael, you may, you know, you're stressed out. You may need something to just help you relax or, you know, for, for anxiety or something. And then roll in the fucking white doctors also after the white whisperers. This will help you sleep. This will help you rest. This will help just take the stress off you. This will, you know, whatever. Michael being a trusting human being. Agreed to that. And then, boom. Suddenly, he's addicted. He's addicted. And we don't know what vampire drugs they got out there. <clears throat> that we don't even know about. That can do sh shit we've never even heard of. You know, I remember back, uh, they used to say that crack... That people could be, you could be hooked on it on one try. One. 
Not like I'm going to try it and I just see if I like it, I'm be over it. No, no. You hit it, you're hooked, that's it. Done. Hit it today, you're a crackhead today. Right now. You see? And what we know about addiction is that it's mental. Or, I'm sorry, it's physical. It's not mental. It's physical. Once you've assigned something to the body in a diabolical way, because any medication is diabolical, once you've assigned something to the, to the body and it now sets up a need for that. A need. You know, one of my uncles, I've told you guys the story. One of my uncles who died many years ago was an alcoholic. And I resented him. I resented him. It wasn't until many years after he died that I learned this that I'm telling you now. And I started making prayers for him in the grave. And speaking out loud and saying, I forgive you. It wasn't you. You had to have it. You had to. Because he was at a point that they get to where you have to have that now to just be normal. I'm just smelling liquor on him. And seeing his eyes all bloodshot and watery and shit. I don't know that he has to have this now. or the, Otherwise his body literally does not function. That's what addiction and dependency is. So by the time we get to the 30th anniversary that he and his brother shot at Madison Square Garden. It was the dizziest Michael Jackson we'd ever seen in our lives. I can't watch it. I watched it the night that it, or I didn't watch it the night it aired. Whatever, I watched it early on whenever I very first saw it and I was over it. I can't watch it. Because I see nothing but a dude that's dizzy as fuck that could fall down at any moment. And then I don't know what the holding the nose thing was about. Maybe there was some sensation that he was getting because of the drugs he was getting. Because he was on, that he was on. His voice wasn't working. He couldn't hit certain notes. And it just was a sad, sad thing. And I just think when I saw it, I just thought those people, y'all don't see Michael. Y'all don't see what y'all looking at. Michael was not even there, dude. He was dizzy as fuck. You could see it on his face. It was sad. It was sad. It was sad. But I say that they hooked him on something. They hooked him on something. I believe that. So if you want to tell me later down the road towards his death that, you know, his hair was falling out and now he's to wear wigs and all that. Okay, I'm willing to hear that. You know, because even uh, one of my ex-girlfriends that I told you guys, she was, she's the biggest Michael Jackson fan ever lived. We knew she would be Michael eventually. We knew it. Anyway, she did, be, she did, she did eventually become friend, friends with Michael. And she's told us the story of being at Neverland and how she could tell Michael was wearing a wig. You know. So, that's fine. But, I suggest to you that it was... It was um, it wasn't of his own doing. I think that over time he was introduced to certain things and then it set up a dependency. And he's gonna have to satisfy that dependency because he's gotta he's gotta be able to function, but he's also Michael Jackson, the most famous human being on the planet. So that's kind of like being boxed in, you know, like, what are you going to do? You choose the devil or you choose the devil. You know, there's not really a whole lot of choices going on. 
So it was very sad. It was very sad. It was very sad. Very sad. And even with his death, I question because they claimed that it was all around this propofol. Well, that's to help him sleep. What we've learned about people with addiction who are on... Well, he was on more than just painkillers, dude. Like, there was a whole host of shit. But whatever is that if he had been on that, he would have been able to sleep. If he's not on that, that means his he has, he can't, then that then that's when he wouldn't be able to sleep. So it, says, it suggests to me that Michael was off it or trying to come off it or something. And that's why he couldn't sleep. All right. By the way, God bless his mother. Just God bless Catherine. God bless her. Let's pull this in a little bit, everybody, so we can all see it. All right, Los Angeles. Sundance, what's the date on this? Yesterday. Sundance said Wednesday that a documentary about two boys who accused Michael Jackson of sexual abuse will premiere at its film festival later this month. While the Jackson State called the film just another rehash of dated and discredited allegations, end quote. I want to stop right there and say this. Lifetime ran this whole surviving R. Kelly shit for money. They're taking a bigger gamble. They're saying, fuck the, little, the small screen. We're going straight to the big screen. They're so sure this is going to be a moneymaker that it's already been shot. They already shot it. It's done. They took it to, to Sundance. Huh? And it, it or, or what they say, and it will premiere at its film festival this month. And then certainly it'll be on the big screen after that, no doubt. You see? But more than that, the dead don't talk. The dead don't talk. And this will be two little white devil boys up there saying some shit. Or now I guess they're adults. Who knows? We'll read on. But it's just their pablum puked out words. No opportunity for Michael to contest or protest. I'm over it. The Sundance Institute announced the addition of Leaving Neverland to its festival lineup along with The Brink, a documentary about former Donald Trump advisor Steve Bannon. The Jackson Estate promptly denounced the Leaving Neverland, which was co-produced by HBO and British public broadcaster Channel 4 and will air on the channel this spring. The 233-minute, two-part documentary will be shown only once at the festival on the morning of January 25th. Quote, this is yet another lurid production in an outrageous and pathetic attempt to exploit and cash in on Michael Jackson and a state uh, statement said. A description of Leaving Neverland says... It will tell the story of two men who are now in their 30s and began long-running relationships with Jackson at ages 7 and 10 when Jackson was at the height of his fame. That's when I saw him, was during the bad uh, tour. I mean, this was the pinnacle. This was the pinnacle of Michael Jackson. Oh, my God. Um... Jackson was acquitted of molestation charges in 2005. Look where they put this at. On its own little island. Remember, an editor, a writer, and a publisher, everybody. They've decided how everything's going to be laid out. What's going to be said and what's not. Huh? All this. It should have opened up and said, Sundance. I uh, said Wednesday, the documentary about two boys who, accu who accused Michael Jackson. Who was acquitted of molestation charges in 2005. No, no. They wait till they get all the way down here, nearly to the end, 
Uh, Jackson was acquitted most of the time. And they go on with their vomit. The film is produced and directed by the BFT winning director. Blah, 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 you see? A representative for Reed did not immediately reply to an after hours email seeking comment. Because it was an after hours email, bitch. Uh, seeking comment Wednesday, but in a press release Thursday, Reed, or Reed, the director, said in a statement that, quote, if there's anything we've learned during this time in our history, it's that sexual abuse is complicated and survivors' voices need to be listened to. You see? Think about that. They're trying to capitalize on the atmosphere they've created of the day, of all the sexual harassment, which is only going on mostly by white people. That's why it's even a thing. Because they're the most deviant on the earth in every sector of human behavior. This is the deviant. But now they're, 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 they're framing this in the context of all of that. What's the language? Uh, if there's anything we learn during this time in our history, comma, it's that sexual abuse is complicated and survivors' voices need to be listened to. In other words, giving himself cover for why it's all these years later that now they motherfucking ass want to speak. And B, um, th like, to put it on the survivors, like, you're not supposed to ever uh, discredit the survivors. Fuck that. There's a requisite that comes with everything. You won't come out and accuse anybody of anything. Certainly, years later, and certainly even after their death, well, the burden of proof is on you, homie. You understand? You don't just get... Uh, they're trying to put it backwards. They, they say when somebody makes an allegation, you're supposed to just believe them because they're victims. Fuck that. I immediately don't believe you, and now you start at zero, and you must prove your, your case up to 100 with me. You don't just get credibility. You, you don't. Um... Reed continued, it took great courage for these, it didn't take no courage. It didn't take any courage. It didn't take any courage because nothing happened. You understand? And they're in it for a coin. It took great courage for these two men to tell their stories. And I have no question about their validity. Of course you would say that. Of course you would say that. That means nothing. I believe anyone who watches this film will see and feel the emotional toll on the men and their families and will appreciate the strength it takes to confront long-held secrets. Listen, they put every charge known to humanity on Michael Jackson for that trial of the century high quotations in front of a white-ass jury in a white-ass county and they said, not fucking guilty on every single charge. There was even a white half out there with a number of birds of doves that she released after every charge. When they said not guilty, she released another bird. So, they can't pin this like it's the OJ case. You see, where he had a black, where OJ had a black attorney and we actually had real black people on the fucking jury. There's a white man trying to convict a black man in a white county with a white judge, with a white jury. Everything was white. And they had to say, not fucking guilty. Because the hand of God overrode their evil. You understand? So, this is a problem. In this May 2005 photo, Michael Jackson arrives at Santa Barbara County Courthouse for his child molestation trial in Santa Barbara, California. A documentary film about the two boys who accused Jackson of sexual abuse is set to premiere at the center. And you know, this should be uh, uh, also panned 
because, simply because there was a trial. Now, if they're trying to say that these are two that weren't part of the, that didn't have allegations against him at the time of some bullshit, then they need to fucking go away and die. But if they certainly were any of the ones being implicated in this trial, in which he was found not fucking guilty, they also need to go away and die. Like, I don't believe you. I don't believe you. And the other thing that I find suspect in their raid that they did on Neverland and all the other shit that they've done to try and tear him down, you want me to believe there's not a single security camera at Neverland? You want me to believe this? Huh? Where's the security camera footage of people just coming and going even? That would even corroborate days that people say they were there or things happened or whatever. In all these years, we've not seen a single security camera footage from Neverland Ranch. I ask you why. I ask you why. I ask you why. Let's go to another one now. Okay. Sundance as doc documentary about Michael Jackson's accusers. Again, same picture. Hmm? Sundance said Wednesday the documentary blah blah blah. This Sundance is to uh, leaving my land by land the Jackson State promptly denounced. Okay. Uh, this is yet another florid. Okay. The description of leaving Jackson was acquitted. Look and look. Look, look, y'all. They did the same thing. As the Associated Press, they just cut and paste. Because look, this still appears on its own little island. Huh? Near the end of the piece. Films are produced, at least be listened to. Recontinue, da 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 da. It's the same thing. Strength it takes to confront long held secrets. I'm over it. Let's go to the next one. Now, this is San Francisco Gate. And they put AP there too, so I guess another cut and paste. Yeah, because here the little thing is down on its own little island. Jackson was acquitted of most days charged in 2005. Uh, long held secrets. Okay, so they're all cutting and pasting. What the bitch? Woman gets life in California wrong way, fatal crash. Whatever, bitch. So it's a cut and paste. All right. Uh, I'll just see if I can find one more that maybe does its own edit editorial <clears throat> and not a cut and paste from the Associated Press. Let me see if I can find that real quick, y'all. W, w top, whatever that is. Again, Associated Press, cut and paste, same picture and all. So I'm saying. So they just cut and paste, and everybody put it out. It's a blitz. It's a blitz. You understand? Let's look at another one. Same thing. Uh, Black Hills Pioneer. It's a cut and paste from Associated Press. Same cut and paste. Same damn thing. Let's look at one more, at least. Another one. The Philadelphia Tribune. Sundance as a da, 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 da. It's a cut and paste. See? Cut and paste. Cut and paste. One last one, damn it. Just to prove my point all the way. News 95.5 AM 750. Hmm? Cut and paste. Cut and paste. We've looked at eight or ten of these damn things, you see. But the point is that I'm driving home, everybody. I always tell you that nothing is on. Uh, 
happenstance. Everything is on purpose. Everything. So we have to ask ourselves in this scenario and why I went to the extra work of going article to article. I could have just told you. They're all using the same picture, all saying the same thing. That's fine. But to be able to show it to you is more powerful. Because it becomes what? Evident truth. Evident truth. Now, we had eight or ten of these that are all cutting and pasting from all sorts of different outlets. Same picture even. Nobody even took the license to just use a different picture. They all use the exact same picture because that means there's one thing they want to convey. So, they picked a picture where to try to mask some of their evil they tried to pick up they could have picked the one where he was in the, the day he showed up in pajamas at the damn court which was also some more white evil you want me to believe that there was nobody that could have snatched an Armani suit out of somewhere for this brother on that day all the security and the attorneys and attorney's assistants and stuff that were around him nobody could just took their shit off and said here Michael wear this Give me your pajamas, I'll wear them. That was always suspect to me and always stood out of my mind and still does clearly right now even. But the unit the unit the, the 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 unity of this is the thing that we should be focusing on, I suggest to you. That every outlet is using one picture and a all copied and pasted one thing. That's it. Nobody did anything to put even their own words in anywhere. It's all the exact same cut and paste. Hmm? Even the physical layout, because here's our little thing still out here on its own little island. Jackson was acquitted in most states charged in 2005. Huh? Somebody said, this is the story, run it just like this. Use this picture. Because remember, there's only two or three people that control all media. Whether you're watching it on TV or reading it in print, in a magazine, a newspaper, it doesn't matter. You literally have a couple of people that are and the positions to control every single thing you read and see. All of it. We even see this echoed in uh, television media sometimes. There'll be a story. And there's been comedians that have done montages of it. I think they've done it on The Daily Show. And I think Conan O'Brien has done it. And a few other people where they show a news story. And they show it from different news organizations. And every anchor is saying the exact same thing with the exact punct punctuations. And it's so rep repetitious that the audience gets a laugh out of it. But I always sit and worry, did they really get it? Do they know what this person just showed them? What the implications of this are? So this is that. And I was go even further now and suggest to you that anything you're going to see on TV with regard to this. Every single anchor person will be announcing it the exact same way, saying the exact same words with the exact same punctuations. This is a hit piece. Let's take you from R. Kelly to boom. Now that following week, let's hit him with Michael Jackson. Let's not focus on the white evil. Who cares that Kevin Spacey's in court right now? Throw that out. Nobody cares. We want to talk about R. Kelly. We want to talk about Michael Jackson. They will be the faces of all things sexual deviant. 
It'll be them. And then we want you to talk about whether or not this fucking bachelor is a virgin or not. That's what they'll be discussing. Quick, put that out. We'll know this. Michael Jackson was one of the kindest, most considerate, gentle, loving, caring, humble, pious individuals to ever walk on this earth. Truth is greater than a lie, but it's hard to know that because a lie to told once is believed more than the truth told a thousand times. So it's hard to accept that truth is greater than lies, that good is greater than evil. It's hard to believe that. It's hard to believe that. But what I know is this man was never guilty of any heinous thing that would be assigned to him. No matter what it would be. He wasn't capable of the type of evil and deviance that they want you to believe he was capable of. And I always say to our people, we never believe anything that they're telling about telling us about our own. We go and investigate it for our damn selves. We decide if that's the truth or not. Not them. Ever. We decide that. And it makes me very sick and highly concerned when I hear African people immediately adopting some shit that has been released. And you start speaking about it as if it's valid and 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 it should be believed or some shit like nah i immediately go to the source who's saying this who's saying it that's where i start you've already missed the boat because you're starting at the information i don't get to that that'll be down the road i start with who's saying this who is saying this who so in this case, before I even get to Sundance, I gotta go back to these two fuckers who they claim this film is about. I have to go back to their ass. Let's start with that. Because it's almost a mute issue. Why are you bringing this up now? Michael was found not guilty in 2005. And he's dead. It'd be different if he had been found guilty and now you just want to rehash and, you know, whatever. And, that the, you know, that's a different presentation than he's found not guilty after a trial that was witnessed by the entire fucking world. He's found not guilty and he's dead why are you bringing this in 2019 why 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 you want us to believe that you're bringing something that was not brought out in the trial by the time that trial was over we knew what underwear Michael wore
So it's not even so much about what you're bringing. Why are you bringing it? Why? And for me, the answer to that is, is for a coin. It is for a coin, but the greater reason is the distracting factor and to set up another name in your head. So everybody's going to be saying, man, they, they, they talking about R. Kelly, talking about Michael Jackson. About, you're going to start naming those two names. That's where you're going to begin. So that you won't be naming fucking Harvey Weinstein and Hugh Jackman and all, just, I can't even name the list. There's so many, like there's, uh, there was, they had somebody white every fucking day. They had to go and start searching for black people to try and add to. Quick, bring in Russell Simmons. Let's say he did something. Quick, bring in Tavis Smiley. Let's bring him in. Let's get him into this too. This is outrageous. Nobody should see this fucking movie because there's no reason for it. There's nothing to learn here. All you're going to see is two lying ass fucking white devil ass adults now on screen doing what they do best. Lies and deception. That's it. And this man is not here to even shake his head. We need to reject this out of hand. It is evil, it is specious, it is irrelevant, it is being used, it is diabolical. We need to hold the memory of this brother in its proper context in our hearts and minds. That we should ponder the gifts that he was given by the divine and sit in silence as I do and have and ask the divine what is it that you would have me receive from his life there was a reason why Allah put him here and he was the most famous human being ever and it wasn't just about spins and moonwalks there was something greater Something more meaningful. Something useful. An example. A message even. You're talking about a man who was talking about global warming before anybody was talking about global warming. Michael Jackson wrote Earth Song before anybody was talking about anything to have to do with global warming or the planet or any of the bullshit. This man wrote this beautiful song called Earth Song. He's pleading with humanity. Pleading with humanity. This crying earth is weeping shores. This crying earth is weeping shores. Wow. Wow. <laughs> wow. This crying earth is weeping shores. <laughs> wow. They've never produced and will never produce a Michael Jackson or anything else that we present that is stellar and outstanding and excellent. So you also have to add jealousy to the equation as well. I've already I've told you a million times, jealousy is not a human emotion, a natural human emotion, everybody. 
Jealousy is not a natural human emotion. It is a learned reaction. A learned reaction. A learned behavior. Learned. Learned. And this beast, being the most inferior thing on the earth, is the most jealous of them all. Now, this clip I wanted to bring um, to briefly discuss. I'm linking, it's not the entire interview. Um, I could only get this one minute clip. But I'm linking the full video in the description box down below. So you can click on and watch the full thing. <clears throat> As you know, I did a full on uh, video about the Kevin Hart uh, dust up and the Oscars and all of it. Um, and so I was pleased really when I saw this heading I don't know what brought me to it I don't know where I saw it I don't know what happened but the thing that attracted me was it said Kevin Hart says I'm over it and y'all know I'm the king of I'm over it like it's it's a phrase that I use <laughs> use all the time at least a million times a day <laughs> I don't know where I, and when I start using that but it's been with me for many 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 years I'm over it and so that attracted me as well but I want you to see, I'm going to show you this, but I also want you to see the full clip. And that's why you're going to click on the link because here now they've sent the Sambo to speak with Kevin. You know, I saw where he had done Ellen and, you know, and, uh, and Donna Lemon had, I guess, spoke to him either on the show or by phone or something. And it's kind of like that story Tupac told. Or was it Dave Chappelle? Well, both of them told the story. Anyways, where the one guy comes to the trail and goes, we got this crazy skit, you're going to wear a dress. He's like, I'm not wearing a dress, I'm funny. And that takes shit back. And then they start sending all these string of people. You know, send so-and-so in. Maybe, you know. It was kind of that for me because he was affirmative when he released his uh, video saying he was had stepped down from the Oscars. He wasn't doing it, that he was standing his ground, etc, etc. Now here comes Donna Lemon and here and she was in her Louboutin heels. Can we add that? And here comes Ellen now, you see. And. I didn't see the full Ellen thing, but it was interesting that that even took place because I think now she was used. And now let's 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 send in Ellen who is part of the alphabet community. And she's okay with Kevin. And you know, for me, it was more about let's let's um, let's give the the alphabet community some sort of a win that they're not deserving of. That's what it felt like for me, because as I said in my original Kevin Hart video, you know, and my whole reason for doing that was to express that I feel like this is all being politicized and uh, blown up this whole LGBT stuff to create another race class religion culture of people out of thin air to attach to black suffering to minimize black suffering they're always trying to make it seem like we're not the only ones suffering when when we are clearly the only ones suffering and who have suffered the most and who are the target of all suffering that is a fact period the damn end that the two are exclusively separate. You can absolutely have no issue with gay people and be fine with that all damn day and still be firm on that shit is not over here. There's no real suffering going on over there. 
we are the authorities on suffering. That was my overall message in that video. Now they send this asshole, this Michelle Strahan person, who's also suspect to me because in my mind, you apologize. You mm -hmm. said you were sorry. Wait, that's really loud. Um, Because in my mind, like, I don't know Michael Strahan. Like, I didn't know him before all of the you stuff that he does now. You know, I just know that he was a former football player of some level of talent. But I don't have to know his, his story to know that he doesn't belong. And when something doesn't fit, we ask why. Why is he this major uh, journalist person now? You know, listen, the first thing that put my ears up to him was when Regis was going to be retiring from that show, Regis and Kathy, and then it was Regis and Kelly. And they were like, who are we going to replace? And it was this whole big thing about who they're going to replace. You're going to bring, now this, Regis and Kathy and Regis and Kelly was like a sacred uh, um, franchise what it represents to white America and all that. Because I don't know no black folks that was huge fans of Regis and Kathy or Regis and Goddamn Kelly. You know what I'm saying? And still don't. But there was all this who they're going to have as a host, who they're going to replace, who they're going to replace. And this guy is the dude? This little white lady, and you're going to bring in this big ass football player with a gap in his teeth whose eyebrows seem to be getting thinner and thinner and thinner as time goes on. Can we add that? Not to mention there might be some glutathione going on to lighten the skin and there's some things going on with the lips and there's just some things that concern the eyes of the Jedi. And now he's Good Morning America and he's, and he's all the, uh, you know. And they recently teamed up with the chick from um, The View. Uh, Sarah something how what it how's he there it goes back to what I was talking about about Whoopi Goldberg how is she there how I'm clear about why but so they send him and unfortunately in this clip I don't think it gets to the part where he's like you know can you just see how people would, can you see how other people would feel like can you just see how other people that is the most disgusting thing that ever comes out of the mouth of any interviewer it they and they, it's 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 standard fare you know the one that comes to mind right now is when uh helen thomas lost her her uh journalism career over supposedly anti-semitic statements which i told you the only semitic people are us african fucking people we are the semites bitch we determine what's anti-semitic and what's not not these fake fucking people from europe and poland and germany all the bullshit those are not semitic people period but when helen thomas after the whole dust up with her and she was joy joy behar had a show on CNN or MSNBC or C CNBC or some bullshit talk show like you know, kind of like a Larry King type show and it, she's just one example and you know the whole thing and Helen Thomas is defending her case and it's all valid and everything and enjoy but can you just see how some people might have been upset by can you just see how people no fuck you can you see so Kevin should have said to him can you see that you're that you are a black man the most oppressed group of people on fucking planet earth and you can you see how you're sitting in front of me asking me about a non group of people that are just made up of individuals from every hue of society they're asian they're black they're white they're latino they're they're old they're young they're women they're men they're everything it's like this ghostly herring. I don't know of a movie, but where something, you know, where a shapeshifter. Whereas, ooh, now I'm a reptile, now I'm a human. And you don't know which ones are the humans, which ones are the reptiles. Like, you, you, I, 
Well, I'm black 24-7. Period. And my history is long and documented. And that ain't even all of it. But the irony for me of a black man who as he sits there his his um, people are being shot down the street without any convictions or trials whose people are incarcerated who systematic genocide is being carried out upon I mean you could keep going down the list the only answer you should have gave is how dare you bring some fake suffrage to real suffrage show me the bellies of ships that carried gay people over show me the lynchings uh for uh that were carried out show me we have the african american museum now the national you know there's others but they they have the the big one now that they make okay show me their museum that stories all of their suffrage throughout history and centuries and uh, come on now is there such real thing as people being gay bashed and all that kind of stuff that absolutely goes on but that is separate and different period the person with the paper cut is not the same patient as the one who's just been given a terminal illness a terminal cancer diagnosis not the same and anyone standing up trying to equate those two should be done away with relegated to the back show me the gay only or or, or, uh, straight only gays only signs I'd like to see that show me where gays had to sit in the back of the bus I'd just like to see that yeah, where is their historical march for for uh, busing and you, you know, where was the you see where is their 64 act and their 69 bill where is that at now this doesn't diminish their suffering it puts it in its fucking place that's all I'm saying let's not over represent shit You don't get the gold medal if you didn't win the gold medal. But just look at this one little 60 second exchange between Kevin and this sellout. Apologize. Mm-hmm. Wait. You apologize. Mm-hmm. You said you were sorry, but there are a lot of people who've taken an issue to the way that you've apologized. Mm-hmm. So, so what do you say to that? So w- w- what do you say to that? Again, he casts himself. He's sitting across from another African. That's two African men sitting there. Males. You understand? And he's casting himself just like as if he was a white person sitting there who has no attachment to Kevin, has no historical connection, not like you're complete, not, you're completely on the other side from me. I don't understand you. It's in his tone. You see? Oh my God, I can't. I say I'm done with it. See that again? It gets no more energy for me. That's why I said you said you were sorry. You apologize. You Mm -hmm. said you were sorry. But there are a lot of people who've taken an issue to the way that you've apologized. Look at this thing. So, so what do you say to that? What do you say to that? What do you say to that? So he's got a, a, a gap and a lisp. I'm over it. I say I'm done with it. It gets no more energy for me. I love this. Because Kevin probably, maybe, has come to what exactly what I'm communicating to you in this piece and what I communicated in my other Kevin Hart video. You know, like, I don't have shit else I need to do. I don't have shit else I need to do. I don't have shit else I need to do. You know, this is on par with I got off the bus and I accidentally knocked knocked an old lady down with her purse. 
highly sorry for that, but that doesn't have any attachment to my suffering as an African person. And that is to make her some oppressed group. You see? That's why I said, for the last time, I'm addressing this. It's, it's, there's no more conversation about it. I'm, I'm literally, I'm over that. See, some brothers have been talking to him. The right brothers have been talking to him. Or maybe, like I say, he came to it on his own. I don't know. Whichever way, however you get to the mountaintop, just as long as you get to the bitch. And so it's all in his demeanor there. And he's quietly even disgusted with this Michelle Strahan person sitting across from him. So it's like, I, I don't have shit to say. And, 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 and subconsciously he's saying, and I don't have shit to say to your black ass either. So they can send your black ass to speak to me. I don't have shit to say. I'm over it. Hear this. I'm, I'm addressing this. It's, it's, there's no more conversation about it. I'm, I'm literally, I'm over that. I'm over the moment. And I'm about today. So if it's accepted, great. If it's not, it's nothing I can control. Some things are left out of your hands. So I'm, mm -hmm. I'm done with it. I'm, I'm, I'm over it. That's why I personally am. And then you, you said on Saturday, you said... And then he act like he didn't hear that at all. That's white in black face. That's all that is, everybody. Don't be fooled by the optics. He just mm, mm, mm. now you sit on Saturday. Now no acknowledgement of what Kevin just said. No acknowledgement. Hear the end of that and see what his see what this bitch comes in. I'm 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 over it. That's why I personally am. And then you, you said on Saturday. And you said on Saturday as if, he, as if that didn't happen. You said on Saturday. You said, I'm evolving. Mm -hmm. You're changing. So what did you believe then that you don't believe now? How have you evolved? Look at the body language there. I'm evolving. Like, he's so white. It's not even, I can't. I don't believe now. Wait, I need to get that. That It's worth it, damn it. So what did you believe? Damn it, Jedi. I'm evolving. There. Evolving. Look at the body language, everybody. Look at the eyebrows. Hmm? Look, watch. I'm evolving. Mm -hmm. Look at that. That seem like a brother to you? I'm evolving. Mm -hmm. Look at that. Gotta see it again. Damn it, it's worth the money. I'm evolving. Mm -hmm. Look at that. One more damn it time. I'm evolving. Mm -hmm. Look at that. He makes me sick do you understand me let's find out where this bitch is from where is Michael Strahan born Michael Strahan was born in Houston Texas Houston fucking Texas hmm Evolving. See what I'm saying? Look. Evolving. Mm -hmm. Hmm? I'm over it. You're changing. So what did you believe then that you don't believe now? How see? See? There's no need for a black man to sit here and ask this brother these questions. But that's not a black man, though. You see? How have you evolved? And Kevin wanted to say there, I'm sure, there's no, there didn't have to be any change in my belief. I'm a black man. You know how shit goes down in the black community. Period. The fucking end. But this bitch is going to sit there and ask, you know, uh, what did you believe then that you don't believe now? Mm -hmm. You're changing. We've got to see the evolving shit one more time, y'all. Just have to. Damn it, it's worth it said on Saturday, you said, I'm evolving. Evolving. That, that sends me. I'm in medication for this. Mm -hmm. You're changing. So what did you believe then that you don't believe now? How have you evolved? I have explained how I evolved, which makes me say I'm over it. Now. <laughs> I'm over it. I'm not saying how I've changed anymore. I'm not saying what I've done and what the new me is. I'm not giving no more explanation mm -hmm. of, of who I am. I've done it. 
And that's the end of the clip. Uh, like I say, don't I, believe. I link the full the full video, and you can watch it. But this whole thing makes me sick, dude. Because for me, this ain't about gay people. It's not. It's not. This is about them trying to attach a made-up group because they tried it with the with the with the Holocaust bullshit. But that has lost legs with everybody, not just Africans, over the over the years because people finally woke woke up and understood. Wait, first of all, that shit was at one time in fucking history, and it wasn't even in this country. So people are over that, over it, and they're starting to understand that indeed we are the children of Israel. It's African people. Period. And as they begin to understand fascism and all that stuff more, they understand how that all could have taken place and it's whatever. So they've dropped that. Then it was, well, let's attach the women. Let's make it about the women and then we'll attach that to them and this. And that's fading. So now this is like the ultra viral uh, uh, Frankenstein group to try to attach. Because if it's women, it's women. You see a woman, you know that's a woman. You see, even if you want to say these fake imposter as Jews, you know that's a fake imposter as Jew. But here now, this can come, they, a gay person could be Jewish, they could be Muslim, they could be black, white, Asian, Indian, Croatian, it don't matter. Young, old, you see, and Kevin Hart is a comic. When a comic stands on stage, he sees his audience, as does any performer. But he stands on stage, he sees his audience. So he sees he's got a mostly white audience that night. Maybe he doesn't want to go so hard on white people just because he's being nice that night. Or he sees women. So, yeah, I'll lay off the women a little bit. Or I see the brothers. I let, you know, whatever. But you cannot see a gay person. You see, and the only evidence you have of them even being gay is you have to see them do something in their bedroom, which none of us is fucking interested in. Anybody can just pop up and say, well, I'm an alphabet also. So it gets into an area and I have, I greatly commend him for saying, fuck your Oscars, anything else you got to offer, I'm out. I don't need to. Uh, and especially, like I say, I look through the tweets, I, I, I challenge my audience, I said, if you guys have seen some tweets that I haven't seen, please let me know about those. But I read the tweets and I didn't see anything in there that was out of line. Nothing. Nothing. And I even see that fake ass joy on the view still talking about, you know, the part that got me was the violence. He said he would he would he, he would beat his kid over the head. That's because you're a dumb white bitch that doesn't understand black people and when we speak. Take your bitch ass to the back, bitch. You see? So there's there's all sorts of things at play here. But it goes back to what I tell you all the time. Every anytime you hear any of these fucking people talking about we're all the same, you have to stop them in their tracks and correct that shit. You don't let that go past you. You don't. And that matters in times like this because then we would have established a a a norm where people would look at this and go, well, if any other comic said that, we would we would think this, but black people have a different way they do things, so we need to stay the fuck up out of it. That's what we need to do. You see? And also, it's fake on its face because him doing, them making such a big dust up about it suggests that there are no black gay people. So... They never, they didn't come up with the backlash that you're offending black gay people because he's a black comic. No, they're making this a big to do because it's about white people. Even Donna Lemon said there's racism within the gay community. Not surprised by that. White folks are hateful no matter where the fuck you encounter them. Period. And being gay is a sexual uh, 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 assignment. It has nothing to do with anything else in your fucking life. 
So you could come, you could be the son of the clan, of the king of the clansmen's role and be gay. And it still doesn't matter. You're still the fucking son of the king of the clan, clansmen's role. Oh my God. Anyways, like I say, as I said in my first video I did on this, my main thing is, as African people, we have to stand at the gate and be vigilant. Stop letting shit pass. Stop letting shit into our fucking culture. Stop letting shit be assigned to us. Stop attaching ourselves to their ass. Because if homosexuality was something that was only unique to the black community, they wouldn't have shit to fucking say. And this kind of lets me know that probably most, because like I say, most of growing up, I thought that I thought the only white people were gay. I, that's my truth. I know I did not know there was such thing as black gay people. I just didn't know that. You see, but that speaks to this now because of the dust up and oh my god and this because it suggests to me that most of them are white. You understand? Most of them are white. And so therefore, that's why this is a thing. It's a backdoor way of trying to attach themselves to the suffering of the black community and make it seem like they are an equal group of people that have suffered as much as us and nothing is further from the fucking truth. Nothing. Nothing. And they have the ability to hide if they're like if they're if they're if their behavior suggests a certain sexual orientation you see a lesbian can put on a long flowing gown and some nails and some lipstick and shit and be over it and you'll never know if a dude is effeminate he can straighten up whatever you see we don't get to shape shift our Africanness we don't there's no brother that's in their grave out there right now shot down the street by these fucking murdering ass police because they were gay they were shot down, targeted, and there's been no justice for that because they were black. You cannot say the fucking same thing about gay people on any fucking day of the week. I'm over it. This is the Jedi.